try to show you some of the uh, uh, or the advantages of different available imaging modalities in evaluation of the uh, craniofacial anomalies so that you can make benefit of all what we have. And uh, we'll uh, divide these anomalies into uh, four categories according to the anatomy and the mirror. Uh, uh, starting by anomalies in the nasal cavity, nasal frontal region, nasal lacrimal apparatus, and finally with uh, some of the craniofacial uh, syndromes. The two main anomalies in the nasal cavity are the aquanal atresia or stenosis and the, the biriform aperture stenosis. And of course, you know that uh, the aquanal atresia is one of the uh, lesions that we encounter uh, uh, frequently in the clinical practice, especially for those who are working in the children hospitals, uh, like Aparish, for example. Then, uh, uh, Quanalatresia was uh, previously diagnosed by uh, a, a very old technique known as nasopharyngeogram, but uh, nowadays the CT is of great help to assess uh, this anomaly. And we have two uh, main types of atresia, the osseous type, which is very common compared to the membranous type. And in the axial CT images, we can look to the posterior quana, and the, here you can, you can see that there is the bony region which is obstructing the posterior nares bilaterally. And they, of course, the accumulation of secretions uh, proximal to the site of atresia. In this example, and you see a, a membranous type of atresia on the right side with uh, distension of the nasal cavity by secretions also. And here you can see a bilateral uh, a membranous atresia, of course, the posterior quana is usually uh, narrowed and then uh, you can see uh, some uh, membrane here which is obstructing it posteriorly. Then uh, this is the two examples for a bilateral uh, osseous quanal atresia and a bilateral membranous atresia in another patient. And there are a lot of associations with the quanal atresia, many, many of the syndromes and uh, anomalies in the craniofacial region. And I, I don't need to bother you by this. And the second uh, type is the biriform aperture stenosis, where the distance between the nasal processes of the medulla is uh, abnormally narrow, and uh, you, uh, you got the medial bowing of these processes encroaching on the nasal aperture. And then normally, you can see a good distance between both, and the, 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 uh, the processes are usually parallel to each other. And uh, uh, for diagnosis of this, we may need to have very uh, thin uh, sections by CT in order to uh, image this uh, uh, in a good way. And there is no uh, in, uh, a reported uh, uh, distance for the aperture, but uh, you, it is stated in the literature that uh, an aperture which is narrow, more than 11 millimeters is considered uh, of the stenotic type. And we can easily measure this uh, distance by CT, and we can also have so many uh, measurements in this uh, particular area. Some of the associated, commonly asso associated anomalies include facial hemangiomas, pituitary dysfunction, and uh, uh, central mega incisors, which is a, a common finding in about 75% uh, of the cases. Then you may use the facility of multi detector CT with 3D uh, imaging reconstruction to uh, uh, nicely demonstrate the nasal aperture, and you can, you can have the measurements. And you can also assess the thickness of the nasal processes of the maxilla as well. And uh, this is uh, an example where you see severe stenosis of the nasal aperture and uh, the uh, medial bowing of the nasal processes of the maxilla. And in the coronal planes, you can also uh, see the, 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 the aperture and you, you can evaluate some of the associations, including the uh, narrowing of the bone inlet, the triangular shaped ballot, and the, the abnormal dentation, as I have uh, mentioned. Then uh, the midline nasofrontal anomalies. I would like to have some words about nasal glioma, encephalocele dermoids, and epidermoids cyst. And you know that uh, there is a, a, a foramen here or the a duct which uh, usually uh, regresses. 
and uh, is totally closed. But uh, if this uh, uh, canal or duct remains patent, there is a chance for the uh, brain tissue and the meninges to herniate so that uh, there may be an encephalocy. But if the duct is regressed with residual remaining glial tissue, you may got uh, what is known as nasal glioma, which uh, may be uh, an uh, extranasal or intranasal or both. Then, um, uh, uh, if there is uh, uh, incomplete involution of the uh, dural diverticulum, you may get uh, these the dermal sinus and dermoid cysts. Then, uh, MRI is very good in evaluation of uh, uh, this area, particularly when, whenever there, are, there is a good clinical suspicion that uh, it contains neural elements, because the MRI can uh, show better the tissue of the brain and they can show the characteristic signal similar to the intracranial part of the, of the brain, enabling to uh, uh, accurately assess the contents of this lesion before uh, surgical interference. And here you see uh, this is T1 weighted image because the, the fluid is black, T2 weighted image, the fluid is bright, and you can see that there is a nasal encephalopathy and uh, uh, you can assess the extent of the brain tissue through the defect in the sagittal and in the coronal images as well. Then uh, this is a, a, a nasal encephalocele and you can see that uh, the contents of the, of the uh, encephalocele is not CSF uh, alone but it contains some of the of the brain tissue. And this is a very important. CT may not be able to see better the brain tissue. And this is MRI sagittal T1 weighted image and T2 weighted image. You can see a very big encephalocele in the mesofrontal area with the protrusion of the brain tissue, which is disorganized, of course, and some fluid in this encephalocele. By CT, you can appreciate the protrusion of the this uh, sac, and the, you, you may be able to identify that its content, uh, the, the contents are of brain tissue. Then, if you look to the MRI, then you see that the brain itself is herniating, and also you can see some CSF and the, the dural sac as well. And uh, and many times you can also assess this very common associated anomaly, which is the abnormalities in the corpus callosum. And here you see a very small part of the corpus callosum; the rest of the corpus is a genetic. And uh, this is a CT scan showing a cystic lesion in the uh, nasal in the uh, nasal area, and the coronal image shows defect in the uh, skull base. In uh, the CT scan cannot uh, for sure detect the contents of the of this uh, uh, lesion, but here you can see that the lesion is irradiating through the skull base into the nasal cavity, and in the T1 weighted image it contains fluid which is black, and in the T2 weighted image the fluid is bright. Then it, there is no brain tissue in, inside this incubator uh, meningeal uh, seal but uh, there is a possibility that the optic tracts may be herniated in the wall of this meningeal sac. Then the nasal glioma is a rare congenital uh, uh, non-neoplastic lesion and uh, the, there is remnants of glial tissue which is uh, uh, in the midline, uh, may be at the, the root of the nose and it, it may have also a continuation inside the nose. We have three types the extranasal, the intranasal, and the, the, mixed, uh, the mixed form. And if you look here and there, you can see that uh, there is a swelling at the root of the nose, and uh, this is CT, and you see the soft tissue mass, and also here. And if you look carefully in the sagittal image, and there, you, cannot, you, you, you are able to identify that this lesion is not continuous with the intracranial contents, and there is no bony defect here. And this is one of the uh, important findings in the sagittal images, whether obtained by CT or by MRI. And in this case, we can see a right nasal mass, and this mass is of bright signal because this is T2 weighted image, and uh, it was proved by biopsy to represent an intranasal glioma. And this is an extranasal glioma. You see the mass, which is 
at the root of the nose, if you see the intact calvarium, there is no connection between the lesion and the uh, brain tissue. Uh, but here in this particular example of a yeah, pathologically proved nasal glioma, you may feel that this glioma is continuous intracranially from these surgical images. And uh, hence the importance of the coronal images as well. And you can see the, the lesion inside the nose and that there is no connection between the lesion and the brain tissue. Then uh, these are the differential diagnoses, diagnoses for the uh, nasal glioma, which is frequently uh, mistaken for uh, dermoid cysts and so on. Then uh, dermoid cysts will, or dermoid sinus will result from incomplete involution of the uh, diverticular, resulting in uh, a sort of communication between the exterior and the, uh, the through the, the track itself. Then uh, uh, this is a good example of a soft tissue mass at the root of the nose and uh, by MRI and you can see the contents of the region. And also uh, by CT and MRI you can uh, able to exclude the, the possibility of encephalocele by loss of the connection between bones but uh, uh, sometimes you cannot uh, differentiate between nasal glioma and dermoid unless you have fat in the dermoid cyst. And fat uh, is in the MRI is the opposite of water. When water is black, fat is bright. And when uh, water is bright, fat is black. And this is one of the ways to uh, differentiate both. But here by the CT, you may be able to see that this is fat inside this midline uh, uh, dermoid cyst where this is a 3D reconstructed image. And here a, an infected nasal septum, the dermoid cyst in the nasal septum, which has been complicated by an intracranial brain abscess in the frontal lobe, as seen by this uh, contrast enhanced MRI. And this is also a, a, a proof of nasofrontal dermoid cyst, and uh, because of the absence of fat. It, it will go into the differential diagnosis, but uh, whenever you are able to see fat inside the lesion, and this is one of the helpful criteria. When uh, this dermoid uh, sinus is infected, you got enhancement, and this is the value of contrast enhanced CT or MRI. By CT, this is a surgical reconstructed image, and you can see the defect at the region of the lesion. And uh, by MRI, you cannot see fat, you see only fluid. This is T1, and this is T2. After injection of contrast, if you got marginal enhancement, and this is the abscess, or the inflammatory uh, inflammatory tissue, then you, you know that this, this is an inflamed lesion. Then we came to the nasal lacrimal apparatus. We have the nasal lacrimal ductus stenosis and the, the decrease here. This is, of course, the uh, normal appearance of the nasal lacrimal duct, as I have mentioned in the, anatomical, in the anatomy uh, lecture. And uh, frequently, the nasolacrimal uh, duct may be obstructed here or in the, in the proximal part, resulting in accumulation of fluid. And this fluid may be uh, secondary infected, resulting in, a, in an abscess. And this is a, a classic appearance of a dacrium cystocele, a, a cystic lesion filled with fluid by CT scan, corresponding to anatomic, the anatomic site of the nasolacrimal duct in the axial and also in the coronal. This is the site of the nasolacrimal duct and this is the uh, dacrium cystocele. If the cystocele is infected, then you inject contrast material, then you got marginal enhancement. Marginal enhancement of a lesion equals the, the, the presence of infection and this is uh, an abscess. Then uh, being a dacrium cystocele containing fluid, it will appear on MRI T2 of bright signal. And this is also coronal T2, and you can see the bright signal of the dacryo cystocele. And this is also an example of dacryo cystocele by CT, a cystic lesion corresponding to anatomic site of the nasolacrimal duct. This is the region of the nasolacrimal duct, and this is the cystocele. Then uh, these lesions are, uh, of course, mo uh, very easily diagnosed by uh, the clinical inspection and the uh, examination of the patient, but I, I would like only to show you some of the uh, ways that we have in our practice to help you in the uh, diagnosis. And uh, of course, the, the previous days we diagnosed this by 
the uh, straight uh, films or the panoramic views of the mandible. And this is an axial CT scan of bilateral uh, cleft palate before and after uh, bone grafting. And uh, I would like to show you some of the uh, uh, facilities that we have uh, considering the cone beam CT. And uh, you, you can have these images and uh, you, you can have the axial, you can have the coronal, and you can have the sagittal and the 3D reconstructed image. All these are provided on CD so that you can look at it in your clinic and also you can uh, stop any of these images uh, to, to have uh, 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 the site, the actual site of the lesion uh, and uh, assess your patient very thoroughly. Then uh, uh, finally we uh, came to the craniofacial syndromes and uh, I would like to mention uh, some words about these, the Cruzan syndrome, the Trichel Collins syndrome and the Upper syndrome. The Cruzan syndrome is one of the rare uh, uh, lesions uh, resulting from uh, premature uh, craniosynostosis. It is uh, uh, associated with, with many skull and uh, uh, facial anomalies. And uh, this, this is stated in the literature, unlike other autosomal dominant craniostenosis, no digital abnormalities are present here. And this, this is one of the helpful criteria. These are the main features of Crozen syndrome, uh, craniostenosis, the flat occiput, the high prominent forehead, the exosomus and hypertelories, coronal atresia or stenosis, mid-face maxillary hypoplasia, and the mandibular broken syndrome. The, these uh, uh, findings can uh, very well uh, uh, presented by the 3D reconstructed images. And in severe cases, you got uh, this abnormality, which is known as the clover leaf uh, skull, and also the patient may develop uh, uh, hydrocephalus. And this is the clover leaf skull in the coronal CT scan and in the 3D uh, reformatted images showing the typical appearance. Then uh, associated with uh, the Crozon syndrome, one of the uh, anomalies which is seen in about 50% of the cases, which is the stylohyoid ligament calcification or the marked prominence of the stylohyoid process, and also the KRM formation due to the scent of the uh, uh, posterior fossa contents in the upper part of the cervical spinal canal, uh, also cervical spinal anomalies. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, 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 Crozen syndrome, you, 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 you see from these MR images that there is a, a good distance between both orbits. This is hypertelorism, this is T1 and this is T2. In one of the manifestations due to craniostenosis, you can got what is known as silver pitten or copper pitten skull, where you see the indentations of the uh, convolutional markings on the calvary bone. And these are the main causes of uh, what is known as copper pit in a skull, increase the intracranial tension, the presence of hydrocephalus or brain tumor, and the craniostenosis. You make it to the Trichet Collins syndrome, and uh, this is a very rare anomaly also, and then it affects mainly the mandible and the zygom zygomas, as well as the zygomatic arches. Then uh, one of the diagnostic features which is best appreciated on 3D uh, CT scan is the bowing of the lower border of the mandible. And uh, also there may be hypoplasia or absence of the zygomatic, uh, uh, zygomatic arch. And uh, you can see, of course, different projections for the, the skull after 3D uh, reconstruction. Here you can uh, see the deficiency of the zygomatic arch bilaterally and you see the hypoplasia of the mandible with the concavity of its lower board. Finally, the upper syndrome, and, and this is the instance, and you have the, the patient have mental retardation, craniostenosis, uh, brachycephaly, and of course, some uh, of the uh, uh, digital abnormalities like symductory, for example. And here you see the fusion and the, the hypoplasia of the phalanges. You see the uh, hypoplasia of the face and and mandible compared to the size uh, of the skull. Okay. Thank you very much.